Greetings everyone, this is Thungon, and I'm here in my water pool in my survival world, and I have been busy in this world, and it has mostly been in here, my dome called Sign Fields, where the goal was to create every single possible farm type in Minecraft, and it is still the goal, and I have progressed quite a lot. Um, the first thing I did since the last episode was tear down the monstrosity of a mob spawner I had before hostile mob system and that was based on a obsolete design requiring furnaces whoa what just happened I just shift clicked a ton of stuff somehow I'll have to rewatch what happened just there but seems like all the cobble in the chest went into my inventory. I don't know what happened, but all these furnaces were the spawning pads of the previous system, which was designed to combat Enderman griefing. However, Enderman can s apparently pick up gravel through glass, like a pure glass wall, and there's gravel on the other side. Enderman can still pick up the gravel. Don't know how that happened. It was through the glass. Maybe it was because it was glass and not stone. I don't know, but the whole system never actually worked. There was maybe one or two mobs in it in months and months. And now I finally have a full working hostile mob system. As you can see, it's fairly effective. It wasn't this effective earlier, um, but I did use like seven... St I take stacks and stacks of torches. I light up the area around sign fields because it's in a mountain biome and it's not surrounded by an ocean like the 1.7 lands hostile mob system is. And so I have to light up all the areas around it. And I also went caving. There is a huge cave system in this area that was unlit. So I lit, all, lit that all up and it's fairly effective now. Um, let's see how much we have. Yeah, so see, uh, in five, less than, in what is that max five minutes, I got in this amount of stuff. I do get string. This is a spider spawner, and it does support spiders, and that's also what I wanted. I wanted to farm the spiders for string. Um, I do not get spider eyes. I do not get enchanted bows or iron tools. So, as far as farming every type of item in this area, this system does not provide all the hostile stuff. But, uh, actually, might have to redo this for a third time. But, yes, so I do get all these now, and it's very, very useful. Um, what I like the most about it is that I have a constant supply of arrows faster than I can use. And... I did not have that ever in this area of the world before. I do have stacks of arrows in 1.7, like a full double chest at least, but I don't go there often enough to replenish my supply, and this really helps with that. And yeah, so this is done. I have glowstone ornaments here for lighting. I've been using more glowstone around this world for lighting effects, and... Um, yeah, this is the hostile mob system. Inside, you can see the water streams below. Um, the design, the aesthetics of this place are no, not started. Um, but inside, the spawning pads work very much the same as the spawning pads on 1.7, actually. Um, let's use dirt at this. Oh, I don't have dirt. Hmm. Let's go get some dirt. Yeah, that that's the only problem with this one. The spiders, if they spawn on these closer pads, they will track me. And they will swim against the current and climb up, up the walls. So I'm not too worried about that. As you can see, I had 14 string in that one run. And that was quite a bit more than, uh, than the others. And so, yeah, I want to get, in, get into here, though. Um, let's just kill these. Die. Get out of here. Okay, so let's get in there. See it. Okay. 
the water streams are pretty much the same as my 1.7 pad. Oh, no, my, my spawning pads are the same as my 1.7 pads. In that, in the middle, there are four 6x6 six six spawning pads. Um, they're connected to a wall. Uh, to Let's get over there, actually. Um, they're connected by a wall to another 6x6 six six pads and more walls. Problems. And these are floating above massive amounts of water streams below. I was not expecting all these spiders, but it's okay. And I just realized I might not be able to see. But these are the two 6x6 six six spawning pads. The 2x2 two two hole for the spiders is right in the middle. It works the same as my other system. You can hear the mobs drowning. And there's two 6x6 six six pads, and then there's a 9x9 nine nine pad with the middle cut out. And this is the same design as my 1.7 spawning pads. The same amount of spawning spaces. Very similar water streams. Although this water stream is actually all on the same level, and the other one wasn't. So, with the exception of just a little bit elsewhere, like right down there, there's a few blocks, but that's it. And, yeah, and it's roughly, it's slightly smaller in efficiency, and it's way smaller at nighttime. So, that's one downside to it, but it is fairly efficient, and I really like it. And, there's also the possibility of adding another layer to this system within sign fields and actually just get down here and oh goodness that hurt thank you feather falling for but let's get back up there and close that gap okay and closed so, yeah, that's the uh, spawning pads, and that was the first thing I did um, to improve this Seinfeld's farms, and I am very happy with this. Um, just a little bit of prettying up left, but that's it. The second thing I did was improve the reed farm. Um, I made it so there were two rows of pistons instead of one, and they all activate. Um, there's still loose drops, though, so I'm not too thrilled about that. Um, it's significantly more than a uh, significantly less than what it used to be. Um, I did notice that there was a big change about that, and I'm still crafting as many books as I can before uh, 1.3 when the book recipes will change to require leather. And yes, I'm just crafting the books now, so I don't have to worry about it later. I need that lever for later, but. Yeah, so that's the reed farm. I made it wider, and I used more slabs, and the redstone is completely covered now. Um, you can only see a little bit of it from here, and that's mostly the particles. But other than that, it is completely covered in red, uh, completely um, hidden for the most, except for the little slim cracks through the half slabs, and that's the improved reed farm. I like the looks of it much better. It fits in with the rest of the sign fields and I uh, like the design. So the next thing I did was the cacti farm and I don't like this. This is one I will probably tear down and redo for a third time. It is way better than the old cactus farm which is horrible looking and but uh, the one thing I did notice about the old cactus farm it, is that it produced more cacti. I only got one there, and this uh, the old cacti had typically two or three sitting there waiting for me. And <coughs> yeah, I don't really like that. Excuse me. And I also don't like how I can't see if there's actually any cacti here. Like before, I had redstone torches signifying when I had cacti to pick up. In this design, I do not. Um, but these piston things are something I came up with to pick up the loot. Um, the piston, these pressure plates have one redstone beneath it, and there's a block 
on that red, uh, the redstone's on a block, and that block's right next to the pistons that push these up. Um, when the pistons are not there, the water streams push the drops, as you can see, right to the edge, and all I have to do is walk up and then pick it right up. So I really like that design, um, but it does not offer the possibility of loot detection to see if there's actually loot waiting for me. And, well, I guess it, this is that's fine for a farm like this because I always know there is loot waiting for me, but other than that, nope, there is typically none. So, uh, there is, I don't have the same thing for the cactus farm. So, um, the next thing I did was improve the smooth stone and cobblestone generators. Actually, uh, I never had a smooth stone farm on in sign fields. I only had a cobblestone and an obsidian farm. The obsidian exploits a bug in Minecraft. As you can see, I still have to light stuff up right outside the glass dome. <sighs> more and more torches. But, um, these are automatic farms. Um, it's off right now, but typically you just mine them like this and the system will generate generate more. The system is run off of a clock, so I typically have it off. Um, but this turns on the clock. And as you can see the cobbles the smooth stones coming out. Um, um, it's not typically faster than high enchanted picks, but the two of them together are. And as you can see my frame rate is dropping both because of the clocks generation of all this and um, I'm recording at the same time so it's no fun but let's get down into the redstone um, redstone is okay I'm happy with it um, the lever comes down from down here um, I have a mock-up right here the lever goes into two things the first one is this side and it powers this piston when the lever is on it powers the piston the piston pushes a block right here and that block is required for this clock um, the clock goes around in a circle and without this block um, the signal dies after it goes through this repeater here so if there if the block is down and I turn off the system through the lever the clock will actually stop so this is a toggable clock and the clock is also powered by a one tick pulse um, this is a one tick pulser um, basically the signal goes through here after three ticks but uh, this torch turns on after two and turns off again after three so it's a one tick clock a uh, pulser that goes into the clock and it powers the whole system um, the system is run fairly simply after that. Um, when there's a block there, this redstone dust is powered when the repeater powers it. And on this one, I'm beneath a cobblestone generator now. And as you can see, there's one torch and two torches. So these repeater, uh, these pistons that push the cobblestone up are powered after two ticks. And the other line um, up, up here is powered after three ticks. So the pistons push the cobblestone up one after two, push it out to farm it after three. The smooth stone generator works the same except for the fact that you cannot push the smooth stone up because that's where the lava is. The lava is above the water. That's how you make smooth stone. And if I push the smooth stone up, it would destroy the lava source or block the lava off from forming more. So I can't do that, so I'll have to push push the smooth stone out and then the smooth stone up and then the smooth stone out to the farming area. So I do that after one tick to push it out uh, in, two ticks to push it up, and up there, up here is three ticks to push it out. And then you also need obsidian to stop the cobblestone, uh, smooth stone from keep pushing it out and out once the uh, top part is full it will keep pushing out because this is not 12 blocks long and I also have obsidian above where these 
to the smooth stone and the cobblestone go up so it doesn't interfere and push further than I would like. Um, the last thing about this area is sometimes the smooth stone generator breaks when the lava updates faster than the water. The lava pours first and it will stop the formation of the smooth stone. So to simply fix that, I take the bucket in this, grab the lava, put the lava in here, grab a water source, refix the water, and then put the uh, water back and grab the lava and put it back. So I have an easy fix for that and it's very simple. And as you can see there's the obsidian here and here so the smooth stone and cobblestone don't go pushed up above the mountain. That's not what I want. But um, lastly I would like to make my very first redstone lamp and this is the first one in this world so I want to show that on camera the making of it and there I go first redstone lamp and I wanted to put it here so when I know the system is on and the clock is on I could figure that out fairly easily by seeing from a distance that the redstone lamp is on and then I should come over here and turn off the clock to stop the lag so that's why I have the one of the lamp there and the obsidian is there for um, the looks of it because of si I have obsidian beneath all this cobble and smooth stone so um, when I'm mining fast I won't accidentally mine like this smooth stone brick with like an efficiency 5 pick this is only efficiency 3 but efficiency 5 rips through it so fast that you would break the block behind you especially if the clock is going at the same time so I didn't want that so obsidian all over the place in this project also have glowstone lighting it up from above um, it lights it up quite nicely all the way around and there's no more torches around this area and it really works so I like this design and I'm happy with it so up here used to be a mountain and now there's a little outcove here that I plan to move my tree farm to so my tree farm would go up here on this alcove I'll have staircases somewhere around and you just heard a little ping meaning my internet disconnected but I guess so record because it's a single player still and I tore down a mountain this used to have obsidian and lava falls it looked really ugly so I tore it down fairly quickly and it's even with the top of the vine farm like I said I'm farming every single thing in Minecraft here so I have just this area and I have an opening for more I also tore down the obsidian farm and did not replace it and that's because it, do, it exploits a bug in the game with redstone turning into obsidian and I don't want that I'm not very I never use obsidian generator because I prefer redstone and I rather mine the obsidian uh, at the obsidian level down below at the lava level and as far as using redstone I don't like it and as far as using a bug I don't really want to use buggy farms for this because then I could theoretically support the duplication bugs, any any and all duplication bugs that come around in Minecraft, like the powered rail one, and I don't want to use those for this world because I have no need for mass amount of stuff, and yeah, I don't really want to exploit bugs in this world because I never have before, and yeah, I just don't really like it. I don't know why there's missing dirt there, but there we go. Also, I improved the wheat farm just a little bit. Um, the doors are now oriented to um, face the center. The door handles will now both face the center instead of both facing left. So that's good. And I also removed these two blocks and put the ladders there, here instead. So I could easily farm it like so. And we go. So that's how it's farmed. And this is my main food source. I want to farm it as fast as possible because this is not a whole lot and 
Yeah, so that's just how it is. And then I pick up the dirt and stuff. I'll replant later. But for now, that's how it works. And then the lastly, this the last area I worked on. Um well no. Let's get to this first. The chicken farm is gone. Um the hostile mob farm interfered with it. So I killed all the chickens then and then Later on, very recently, I tore down all the bricks, and this is where I plan for my passive mob tower to go. The tree farm will move up to there, and I'll have a passive mob tower for all seven passive mobs. Um, dogs and cats will have their probably their single their own layer where I could just breed them. Uh, I don't have like a jungle or taiga where to like, really capture wild wolves or wild ocelots if I can breed them I don't really want to because they're buggy and I don't want them running around but this is for all farms including all animals so I must have it also cows sheep pigs and chickens will have their own layers um, it will be a simple breeding cell um, there won't be any redstone with it really except I want to have mine carts and if I want to grab the animals from the pens I'll grab them with mine carts and then have bridges carry them across sand fields and out into the world to whatever bigger passive mob farms I want like my wool like the rainbow road where I have all 16 wools in the road down there um, I don't think I'll have all 16 colored sheep here but I actually might have to because that's technically your farm. But I'll probably have just one of each or something. I don't know. But yeah, all that. And then the squid farm will have to go underground. I'm thinking somewhere below here. Uh, digging down from here. And so yeah, that's my plans for this area is have a passive mob tower. And when I breed a lot of them, I could open some gates and I could flood them into, uh, flood a few of them into some sort of finalized area where I have just a bunch of mix of extra, extra animals to farm if I ever want them. But for the most part, I'll never farm them with ex with a few exceptions like maybe leather or um, feathers, but that's it really. I won't eat their meat because even though I can, um, I don't need it for to survive. I eat bread just fine and it works and I'm surviving and I don't starve to death. So I won't use meat as a main source of food because I don't really want to. So lastly, as you can see, I have light blue and blue wool from the Rainbow Road and that's from up here. I stylized it up with some nether brick and nether brick stairs based on the design I saw on Reddit that used like half the stairs one color, half the stairs another color like this, like two faced stairs. And I stylized up this hallway a bit and I redid this whole skeleton farm. Um, this skeleton farm is awful. Like I'm embarrassed to say I made that farm. It was so bad. Um, yeah, very bad, very poor, very limited space. But now it's at 100% efficiency, so it's completely lit up. I lit it up because I thought it was lagging at my world very bad. In this part of the world, yesterday, um, I was lagging, having huge lag spikes, and I have no clue what the cause is yet. And it was not the skeleton farm, because even after lighting it up, um, it was still having... It's still giving me issues, so um, it wasn't this. The skeleton farms go through that and the water stream, and then they drown right here. But instead, I think I'll make this an experience farm and a powered bow and bow farm to have three more types of farms because those are farmable, and I want to have those here. So I will have it. Um, a zombie spawner is nowhere near this area from what I know, but there's a spider spawner down there. So I don't, I'm not sure how I'll farm iron yet, uh, except iron golem towers, 
um, DocM released a tutorial on how to build it and it's very good, very informative and I now know the theory behind it so I can actually build it in this world. Um, I won't go crazy with two huge towers like he did. Maybe just one of the cells instead of the four you get with two towers. But I do need, do have to include iron farms to have this huge goal of mine. And even if I don't use it, I still want it for just the completionist sake of me. And yeah, so this area is the ice farm. Yep, I have ice ready to go for 1.3. Um, this is automatic farm I'm um, using butt switches uh, and I have this design with the wool and the half slabs this area needs to be dark because uh, mobs will spawn in otherwise or the ice will melt and all you can see of the redstone in it is one repeater and the six pistons which I think is really good um, this ice will come back eventually but it is fairly slow, but I don't see myself needing a whole lot fairly quickly. Um, I do have uh, torches above these half slabs to give it some more atmosphere and to actually make it so I could see in here. But um, for the most part, all these slabs are here to stop mob spawning. Um, this little bit, I'll actually need to... turn to glass to stop more spawning but and make it so I don't see plain stone behind the glass um, my mouse is kind of low I feel like it's dying but okay yes where's my glass here it is and even though light the light might not melt the glass from up down there Oh, as you can see, all these got ice pushed out. That's how the farm works. Um, it's 100% automatic. It'll fix itself if it breaks. But down here, I have the glass. So just in case I break it with something not silk touched, the water will flow down and into this into these tunnels, so it won't flood my base or anything it would just flood only into those tunnels and I could handle that and that's why I have those little safety things there so on the outside um, I use a tutorial based on I uh, use a tutorial for the ice grinder link will be in the description but I forget who actually made it um, I did a quick YouTube search for ice machines automatic ice machines and found this design so that's what I went with and it is poking out with sign fields but that's because sign fields does not encompass an ice biome and you need ice to actually uh, snow biome actually make the ice and all this has had to be lit up and apparently I forgot a furnace up here or furnaces on me. I did need furnaces to stop from pushing the ice down like you see there and then the ice gets melted and floods this whole mountain as it did already um, but so getting up here so yes here's the ice it forms um, it needs direct access to the sky and it forms, there's uh, sticky pistons right here and when the ice is formed they're updated the sticky pistons are technically unpowered now they're bud switches and when the ice is formed next to them there we go um, the pistons push back and it triggers the rest of the machine um, yeah see I need to really watch out for things like that um actually come on I could just make a little barricade there um so the machine pulls the ice back pushes the ice down and then it pushes the ice into the actual farming area and yeah, so that's how the ice machine works. 
and I'm glad to have that type of farm in. And for the final notes of this video and for what I have planned for the next one, um, I plan to do before the next one begins uh, is filmed. I have made a little. Hi, CP. I have made a little a bulletin board for types of farms I need. Um, ice I could take off finally, but I need seven passive mobs, squid, the four animals, dog, cat, and that's all six. I need trees and apples. I'll need to redo that, and I'll need all four types of trees here. Um, here's m m mushroom, uh, mushrooms. Um, I'll I have that plan to be beneath the mob system in between the drops so red on this side and brown on this side um, what else do I need? cocoa beans alright so it's 1.3 so I'll wait to actually build that farm um, cocoa beans, ice, snow um, snow will probably go next to the ice two snow golems and I could quick shovel them squid um, I mentioned I'll be down below the um, next to the uh, cobblestone generators, uh, cobblestone generator. Um, this is better times two cacti, um, which means I need to redo the cacti farm again. Obsidian and sand are question marks, actually going to be removed. Gold, um, I could do that either two, few ways. I could have, oh, that reminds me. I could have either. Another portal that goes into the nether to another perimeter that farms uh, zombie pigmen. Um, I also would actually need to farm uh, gas tiers that way, some sort of gas farm in the nether. Um, that would be a huge project for. S oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> actually, be a huge project for another time, way another time. But. Um, some sort of I could farm the gold there I could farm the gold I have started plans in my redstone test world for ooh, this is dark for nether portals zombie pigmen could spawn inside nether portals from my testing they'll only spawn inside the actual portal itself and I could you have a ton of nether portals and automatic farm to farm the zombie pigmen in the overworld and it is pretty fast faster than you might think um, based on early designs and yeah it's pretty cool um, I like the uh, plans with that another way to farm gold is to have a zombie pigment farm that utilizes lightning on pigs to farm uh, turn them into zombie pigmen and that's one way to farm them I guess um, and that reminds me the other thing is records um, I'll need to have a record farm here, and I'll need to have a lightning creeper farm here too. And both of those are doable with a little system I have beneath beneath this thing. Um, in the center, when I drop down the 2x2 two two shaft, um, I have an opening right here. And this is an ABBA switch, which means... Um, the first system will turn off, the second system will turn off, and then in reverse, the second system will turn on first, and then the first one will. And this is used because I want the water streams that push these things to turn off first, and then these gates to open, so that way the water does not flood down, so the water is off first. And then when it turns on, I want the gates to close, and then the water to turn back on to push the mobs out. And that's done with the ABBA switch. Water, gate, gate, water. ABBA. And that's this design. There is faster design that I'll probably change this to. But as of now, um, you can see that the mobs actually fall through these holes. And this is used so um, instead of drowning them, I could. Oh, I could use them to get turn all these mobs into an experience grinder of some sort. I could turn it into a record farm. I could turn it into a 
Zombie Pigman Farm. Actually, no, that'll be different with the passive mob tower. But I could turn it into all sorts of different things that utilize different mobs, shooting different mobs, and uh, lightning creepers, things like that. And I just failed to do repeaters. But so yeah, that's that's my plans for this area. And the last thing on the list is fish. Um, I'll need to add a few more in, and I'll probably be getting a few. Um, I actually do have, if I come up to here, this is the last thing, I promise. <laughs> if I go in, we'll see, I actually have another wart farm right adjacent to sign fields, and I farm my nether wart this way, um, to farm it. All at once, I would press this button, and this whole piston, uh, these pistons will push, and the nether wart will go on top of the stone brick and instantly pop off. So that's how I have those things farming. And let's put those back. Seeds are, yes, less than useful at this moment, but. So yeah, that's how my nether wart farm is, and that's all the farms I have done since the last video, and I've done nothing else in this world except work on all these farms since the last video. So, yeah, thanks for watching this as always. This is Dungon, and I'll see you next time.